Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Rochelle. So, this is gonna be my third video in a row being a story time. So, I'm coming at you guys with a story time of something that happened to me when I was in sixth grade and it was really, really fucking traumatizing. And I got diagnosed with PTSD afterwards and it was really intense and I had like severe anxiety and had to be put on medication in like the seventh grade for like severe anxiety and stuff. I was in therapy for a long time. So I'm going to tell you guys the story of what happened to my mom in sixth grade and how it fucked me up. So I'm gonna jump right on into the video. So this happened middle towards end of my sixth grade gear. Yeah, I was in sixth grade in elementary school. And honestly, up until then, I never really experienced anything sad. I never really experienced anything like really mentally hard that you like have to push through that like makes you stronger but then kind of fucks you up at the same time really fucked up for a while from it thank you okay so let me just let me give some backstory so my mom her whole life has suffered from like really really debilitating terrible terrible migraines she has tried every single medication she goes weeks where she can't leave the bed she genuinely she can't see any light she can't see any speck of light or else she'll start violently throwing up she's just suffered from them her whole life she used to take i can't she's taken imitrax she's taken so many different medications they make her hair fall out they make her lose weight she will look like a skeleton like she's just suffered horribly from debilitating like the worst migraines that you've ever you can't even imagine how horrible they are. So in sixth grade, she started taking this medication. I can't remember what it's called. It's actually no longer sold because it happened to a couple people, this, what happened to my mom. When I was in sixth grade, that's like the fifth time I said it, there was one day where my mom started feeling kind of weird. She started getting pains in her left arm and like weird sensations and numbness and her chest was really, really hurting and she just, something just did not feel right in her body. And the weird thing is, at her work that day, she had actually gotten a physical, but signs of what I'm about to tell you happened to her don't show up on a physical. And so they like didn't think of anything of it and she didn't tell them what she was experiencing because she thought like she could push through it and that it like wasn't gonna be serious but then it really was. The whole day goes on and I come back from school and pretty much everything's fine. My parents aren't really telling me or letting me in on what happened or what's happening to my mom. They're kind of just like seeing, playing it by ear. And then eventually the pain in her arm and numbness and her chest was like getting too much and it's like making it hard to breathe. So then they decided to go to the ER and they weren't really telling me. They just said, hey, we're taking mom to the hospital. I was in sixth grade. They didn't want to freak me out. And so they dropped me off at my friend's house with my friend and her mom who lived like right down the street from me. As they're driving to the hospital, which was honestly like a five minute drive from my house where I lived, I remember calling my dad be like, hey, like just checking in just like within the time that he dropped me off and the time that they were driving me to the hospital. And my dad answers and he's screaming. Like I have never heard my dad scream or yell like that or cry in my life. And he's like screaming, something happened to mom, something happened to mom. And then he hangs up the phone. And then I start freaking out. I start hyperventilating. I just start screaming, crying. Oh, my friend's mom immediately gets in the car and she drives me to meet my dad at the ER. And I see, as we're leaving the ER, I see an ambulance rushing, like leaving the hospital. I just knew it was my mom. That ambulance was rushing my mom to San Luis Obispo, to the hospital there. So finally, we get to the hospital, to the hospital that my dad was at and my mom was already in the ambulance going to the hospital in San Luis. I remember my friend's mom dropping me off. I was crying, my dad was crying, and like up until that point, I had like really never seen my dad cry. We get in the car to start driving to San Luis, and my dad is just like, just not good. And I remember sitting in the seat before I was like asking my dad what happened, and the seat that my mom was sitting in was soaking wet. I was like, Dad, I think I peed myself, and he's like, No, that was mom. She. When she started having a heart attack and stroke, um, 
all of her body just like let out everything so I was sitting in my mom's pee from when she had her heart attack and stroke and we're in the car and my dad starts explaining like what happened when I was on the phone and he said right when I called my mom was talking to him completely fine and then all of a sudden she started going and then her eyes rolled in the back of her head and her head flew back and she was just like, I don't even want to do it, it like freaks me out. She was unresponsive, wasn't breathing, she was completely limp and she started to turn like purpley white. I can't remember what my dad described it and he remember right when that happened they were at a stoplight and he just blew the stoplight, or red light, not stoplight. We rushed into the ER area and then he like went and brought her in carrying her <clears throat> and then the nurses and everyone in the ER room laid her down on the table completely took her clothes off she was pronounced dead for I think it was like two minutes maybe three minutes I can't remember it was so long ago and they did the paddles on her I think they had to do it twice and they were I don't know what the fuck it's called, fucking pushing on her chest, I don't know what it's called. So they were doing that, trying to bring her back to life, get her a heartbeat, get her breathing again, get her on, not breathing on her own because she couldn't breathe on her own. They had to like put breathing tubes and manually, like, I can't describe it, it's like a big thing and so it breathes, so someone else is holding it and then it breathes for the person who's like unconscious. And so they did that and they immediately got her into the ambulance and just boom, boom, boom. And so my dad and I were driving to San Luis and he was explaining all this to me and I was just fucking unconsolable. Like, that was my mom. I couldn't live without my mom. I was in sixth grade. I had just gone to a regular day at school. So by the time we get to the hospital, they are already having her in surgery. She ended up being in surgery for like fucking like six, seven hours. She got, after that she had to get multiple surgeries done over like the next week to get stints put into her heart to uh, keep the valves in her heart open. Had her in an in a induced coma for over a week. They, she was in the ICU for over a week and just completely covered in cold blankets. Her whole body was white. She had crazy just machines all over her. Breathing tubes, like. It was like my worst fucking nightmare seeing my mom like that in a state like that. What they explained to us was if they take her out of the coma, which is what they put her in so that she wouldn't lose even more brain damage from the stroke, was that if she does wake up, they don't know if she's going to be able to talk or remember how to eat and if they're going to have to reteach her everything. Well, just the extent of the damage was on her brain from the stroke and the massive heart attack. It was just like the hardest thing. I didn't go to school for I think two weeks. My whole family, like we just, first night it happened, it was like literally we took up the entire room. Everyone just slept there. I slept on a bed, it, like in the hospital and no one, like literally my sister's like, no one left the hospital for like a week. Uh, and just like not being able to talk to my mom was like the hardest thing ever. And just seeing her, her whole body completely white, just lifeless like not breathing on her own it was just like the scariest thing I'd ever seen in my life they wake her up they move her into another room so she's no longer in the ICU they start trying to figure out what caused this massive heart attack and stroke my mom has never been a drinker she's never been a smoker she's always worked out she's really fucking little like she's skinnier than me like she's always just been in really good health and they end up figuring out that it was her migraine medication. It caused two of her heart valves to shut, like swell shut, which is what caused the heart attack. And she's back home and she's so weak. She's just, it's just horrible. I'm, it starts happening again. She starts getting the pain in her arm and she starts getting the pain in her chest. So we rush her back to the hospital and one of the stints had moved and her heart valve was shutting again. So then they had to take her immediately back into surgery and then I started, it was, oh, I just started having flashbacks and I just like knew I couldn't lose my fucking mom. Like I, I literally would not have been the same if I had lost my mom. They fixed everything in the surgery and she, was she couldn't leave her bed for like three months. She couldn't do anything. And then after that, I, that's when like my actual severe anxiety started showing up. There was one night at like, this was 
end of sixth grade, after everything had happened to my mom and she was back home for like a month or so from the hospital, it was about three in the morning and I woke up and I started like, I thought I was having pains in my left arm and chest and I started having this crazy, crazy onset and fear that I was having a heart attack and so my aunt, one of my aunts took me to the ER at 3 in the morning and they just said no like you're having like a PTSD anxiety episode of like what you witnessed with your mom and then after that they put me into therapy and I got diagnosed with PTSD and severe anxiety and so I went on anxiety medication in 7th grade and yeah it was a it was not a good time let me tell you it was not a good time and yeah she still has lasting effects and it was just a really horrible time so that is the end of that story of what happened to my mom in sixth grade and how it fucked me up and how it makes you really really sad to think about seeing my mom in a state like that not being able to talk to her some a machine's breathing for her and yeah it was just really really sad and a hard time for me so I know this was kind of more of a serious story and I'm sorry for that but I hope you guys still enjoyed me telling the story of something that happened in my life and like comment subscribe follow all of my social media and thanks bye